Okay, Noel, let me do a quick exam, okay? Okay. Okay, Noel, you're fully dilated. So when you feel a contraction, you can go ahead and push. Okay, I'm ready. Alright, we're gonna hold your legs. Make it easier. Okay, push. Okay, I'm pushing. Ready? Push. Okay. Contraction. Push. Push. That's good. 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 Doing great, Noel. Bringing the head down nicely. It's not every day you get to see a baby being born, especially if it's a robot baby. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. That's it. That's it. Oh, baby's almost out. Is it a boy or girl? It's a baby girl. Is a lifelike birthing simulation tool being used to train medical students around the country? And Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore just got theirs. I definitely think it's going to be a great aid for students. It's definitely something that I would have wished that I would have um, had earlier in my training. Um, I think because generally when we teach, especially in teaching medical students and residents, when you don't have kind of a full um, simulated model, it's very, very hard to be able to teach maneuvers. I mean, this is very realistic. Obviously, everything is um, as it would be the patient, the way that she's positioned on the table, the size of everything. So you really can practice maneuvers not only for you know uncomplicated things, but complications as well. David Azaza is one of the brains behind Noel. She's been under construction for two years and is now being used in real-world settings like this one, which Azaza, along with the Hopkins team, says is necessary because it's better to learn and to make mistakes on a robot instead of a real person. We can use her for medical education, we can use her for residency education, we can use her for new nurses as they come on the team, but most importantly, we can use her as a mechanism to study the team as they work together um, during a birth process and especially during a high-risk situation. And we can observe communication amongst the team members and then we can videotape that and play it back and say, well, what did we do well, what could we do better? Or what did we learn from this situation? She's like a real patient in that we she's hooked up to a fetal monitor, so we can monitor how, what the baby's doing. Um, we have her hooked up to an IV, so we can monitor that. We can actually draw blood from her. Umbilical cord is there, placenta is there. The umbilical cord can get wrapped around the baby's body part. During this scenario, the baby had shoulder dysplasia, but there can be other complications, such as long labor times or having a breech baby. But there are still some aspects that keeps Noel from responding like a real mother in labor. No, the mother doesn't talk, so we usually have a lot of fun with that. We usually appoint somebody on the team to be the mother. And they can be as creative as they want to be as far as the actual, um, for the mother's part. And just like there can be complications during the delivery process, there can also be some challenges in recreating a realistic delivery. Then getting into the terminology of a specific thing, it's a little bit complicated where you have to learn. And like pretty much a new language because the terminology is very specific for OBGYN. So you gotta read books and talk to the doctors and every time it's a learning learning curve. This just keeps going up and up and up. According to the American Pregnancy Association, 875,000 women experience one or more pregnancy complications. Noel cost about $20,000 and has been on the Hopkins campus for about two weeks. MCIC Vermont, Hopkins Insurance Company, funded Noel as part of a patient safety initiative. Gardmard Scientific is now working on the next model for Noel, a wireless version. <laughs> Good job, Noel. Good job. Okay. For Discovery News, I'm Casey D. Gardner.